I have my daughter in the kitchen, Rihanna. Hello. What's your favorite cookie? Hot chocolate cookies. First step is we're going to cream together our sugars and butter. In a large bowl, we're gonna place one cup of very soft butter. We're going to add one cup of white granulated sugar and two thirds cup of brown sugar. Now you wanna make sure that it's packed. And then we're gonna have Rihanna beat this together until it's nice and creamy and blended well. Should take about two minutes. I'm gonna add in two eggs. I do it this way to make sure there's no shells. Yep. And then we're gonna add in a little drizzle or one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We've got a sifter. We're just gonna lay it over our bowl of mixture there. That way it all happens in one bowl. We're gonna add three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour to the sifter. Woo, there we go. Yep, one. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna have her take four packages of hot cocoa mix. Now these are 0.85 ounces each packet. You know you're baking when you get flour somewhere. <laughs> I'll let her get some of those in there. All right, that's three. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup. There we go. And then to that, I'm going to add one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda. That's one and a quarter. And then we're gonna measure out one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Yep, there we go. We're just gonna pick that up, sift it on in. I'm gonna have her do that. There you go. Now you can find this recipe also on my recipe blog, katherinesplates.com. Woo, she's getting an arm workout. We're gonna have to blend all that together. We're gonna go back in with our electric hand mixer that's already got the beaters on it and then we're going to mix this all together start slow and start deep down in your bowl that way you don't have a big powder puff coming up on you now this is going to be a thick batter once you get the flour pretty much incorporated ramp up your speed all right and you're going to want to grab a wooden spoon for the next step we're going to add in two cups of chocolate chips Put them in there. I think we'll just finish that off. Go at it. You just want to mix enough until those chocolate chips are incorporated. You don't want to do this with your electric hand mixer because it might burn the motor out. You don't want to do that. You can burn these motors out. Thanks. <laughs> We're going to take our cookie scoops. Now these are the small ones. They're about a one inch. We're going to go into our batter. Just remember it's pretty thick and come up, you wanna flatten it on the edge so you get the right amount. Then you're just gonna place it into your clean hand. You're gonna form a ball, and then we're gonna place it on our cookie sheet. Give them room to grow. And then we're gonna finish these off with something before they go in the oven. Grab you some mini marshmallows. So you're gonna take a few of the marshmallows, about three, and then you're gonna put it on top of the cookie ball and then you're gonna flatten it down, just like that. We're gonna take this pan of cookies, we're gonna place them in the oven that's been preheating at 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. You want them nice and kind of crispy on the edges and kind of golden brown on the back side of the cookies. Now when you pull these out of the oven, Leave them on the pan for about five minutes or so. That way they can finish setting up before you pull them off and put them on a cooling rack to cool completely. You excited? Oh, I am. All right, we have several batches done. Look at those. Look at the marshmallows, nice and toasty on the cookie. Oh, nice and golden on the bottom. Mmm, looks delicious, doesn't it, Rihanna? Mm-hmm. 
Mmm. <laughs> mmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. You remember those? Mm-hmm. Thumbs up. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. I've got Joseph, my son, in the kitchen today. Yep. Hello. His mm -hmm. favorite cookie is? Oh, M&M cookies by far. Right here. Oh, yeah. First thing we're going to do is cream together our butter and sugars until they're nice and smooth. So in a large bowl, Joseph's going to add one stick of melted butter. It's kind of half melted and half softened, so that's a really good mix. Hey, y'all let us know down in the comments, what is your favorite cookie for Christmas? We're gonna add in one third cup of brown sugar. All right. Half a cup of white granulated sugar. Okay, we're gonna take our electric hand mixer. We're gonna beat this together for two minutes until it's nice and creamy. Now, if you don't know Joseph, he's my son. I can get him in the kitchen every now and then mm. to make stuff. We have a playlist that has the videos that Joseph has done with me. He's been so busy lately, I haven't seen him in the kitchen in quite a while. I have been pretty busy. But well, we, I'm here now. But we got them in here now. Yep. Take a spatula and then just pull down the sides. We're going to add one egg. We're going to let Joseph one hand crack the egg. Mm. I told you I learned that from him. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We're going to mix that in until it's well combined. All righty. There you go. Thank you. Okay, we got it all mixed up. We're going to turn it off. What we're going to do now is set this aside, and then we're going to bring over another bowl, and we're going to start mixing up our dry ingredients. Let's do it. Let's do it. In a large bowl, we're going to add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. While he's adding that in, we're going to add in one teaspoon of baking powder. And then I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're going to add a pinch of salt. Then I'm going to have Joseph whisk that all together. It's going to aerate the flour and then it's going to incorporate all of the dry ingredients together. We're going to bring back over our butter sugar mixture. Butter sugar. You're going to start putting some of the flour mixture into the butter mixture, and then we're just going to take our hand mixer and blend it together until it's all incorporated. All right. So just a little at a time. I'm excited for these cookies to be finished. <laughs> he's really good in the kitchen, y'all. I try. Y'all should go check out the other videos that he's done with me. Oh, yeah. Definitely some good videos in there. All right, we're going to finish off the flour mixture. We're going to ramp up the speed on the hand mixer here so we can get through all of that. Make sure you ramp it up. It's time for the M&Ms. We are using holiday style. They're red and green. This is a 10 ounce package. We're going to add these in. Let it rain M&Ms. Oh, I'll let it rain, <laughs> believe me. The whole package. Oh yeah. All right, Joseph's going to take our Ho, 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 Christmas <laughs> spatula. Yep. And get to working. Our cookie making spatula our for green, the good old Santa. Our green truck. All right, mix those all in with your spatula. Do not do this with your hand mixer. Yeah. <laughs> it, you'll clog it up. Here, I'll hold it. All right, go to town. Okay, it looks really good. What we're gonna do is take a one, one and a half inch cookie scoop. Yeah, we're gonna make these small. Here, cookie dough. Pull out. We're going to let Joseph do this. Mm -hmm. Get a nice mound of dough there. I'm just going to put it in my hand. Roll them into a ball. Place them onto the cookie sheet. Now you want to leave space in between each cookie ball. Now y'all make sure that your hands are clean when you do this step or you can put kitchen gloves on. Yep. So yeah, you're going to scrape it along the side of the bowl into that and then you're going to plop it into your hand 
And then you're going to just kind of roll it out. And then once rolled out, we're going to go ahead and take it and plop it to where there's room between the cookies. Yep, you want like two inches between each cookie. Yep. You can go back and fill in some M&Ms on the tops of the cookies. Okay, here's batch number one. I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees. We're going to place the cookies in there for eight to ten minutes mm -hmm. until they're nice and golden along the edges and kind of set on the top. And then we're going to pull those out. You want to rest them for ten minutes before you pull them off of the cookie sheet. We'll be back. This is the second batch. Now I've been flattening these. If you want a flatter, crispier edged cookie, then you can take some parchment paper and just flatten down the cookie. Otherwise, they'll be like a soft, chewy cookie on the inside and they'll be a little bit puffier. That was our first batch. So we'll show you the difference. The first batch of cookies came out of the oven. We're gonna let these rest for 10 minutes on the sheet pan. You can see that they're golden brown on the back side. And these are gonna be the soft and chewy cookies because we didn't flatten these down. This is the soft and chewy badge. Okay, we have our crispy, crunchy cookies. Oh, look at these. Still buttery, soft on the inside. Flat and crispy on the edges. Nice and golden brown. All right, y'all let us know down below which one would you like to try. Give it a try, Joseph. Oh, yes, I've been waiting. Tell us what you think. Mmm. Oh, those are really good. Like, scrumptiously good. All right, you're good for Christmas? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We wish y'all a Happy New Year also. Give us a thumbs up on this one. Bye. I've got my husband. He's going to tell you what his favorite Christmas cookie is. Oh, it's oatmeal chocolate chip. Y'all, let's make a cookie. What we're gonna do first, start with the dry ingredients. We're gonna start with one cup and a third of all-purpose flour. So just dig deep into your flour. We got a one cup here. Take your knife and just kind of scrape it off and even that out. I'm gonna add that to the bowl. And then we're gonna do that with the third cup. A little easier with the third. <laughs> Come up. To that, we're going to add a pinch of salt. We're going to add three quarters teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You can go up to a teaspoon with this recipe. We're going to take a whisk and then you're just going to blend this all together till it's well incorporated. Then we're gonna set this aside. All right, we're ready for the next step. We're gonna place three quarters cup of melted butter into a large mixing bowl. Now you wanna make sure that you kinda of cool the butter down first before you add it to your bowl. Yep, it's nice and cool. Buttery goodness. All right, we're going to add in three quarters cup of brown sugar. Now you want to make sure it's packed. And as you can see, we have packed brown sugar. You can use light or you can use the dark brown sugar. And then we're going to add half a cup of white granulated sugar. Power tool. All Yay. right, we've got an electric hand mixer. This is our KitchenAid. We're gonna go ahead and blend together the butter and the sugars until nice and creamy. All right, I had to go find my honey. It was lost. It was right here. He's found. <laughs> Hopefully you can find yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that that's nice and creamy, we're gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of honey. Mm. Oh yeah, he said add more, <laughs> but we don't want to mess up that texture to the cookie, so. No, but honey's good. I'm sure he'll want to lick the spoon afterwards. You know it. <laughs> then we're going to add one tablespoon 
vanilla extract. I guess I didn't lose that. Mmm, man, that stuff smells good. All right, we're gonna crack one egg into it. Just check for shells. Shell off. <laughs> My son taught me that one-handed crack the egg trick. You're just showing off, man. If y'all know Joseph. All right, we're gonna blend this all together. All right, just go in with your spatula, pull down the sides. All right, what we're gonna do now is take the flour and we're gonna slowly add it into our butter mixture and blend that on low. So in other words, don't cause a uh, smoke cloud? Yeah, don't do that. So we'll go with that right there. All right, that's good. All right, y'all knew this would happen. Look what happened. My gnome cookie jar is empty. Must have been the kids. <laughs> the big one over here. Hey, hey. <laughs> we need to fill it up, that's for sure. Y'all remember I had thumbprint cookies in there? Yeah, they, they didn't last very long at all. Two and a quarter cups of old fashioned oats. So we're gonna add that. Are you still gonna use the mixture? Yes. Ooh. Okay, go ahead and just dump them all in at once. Shake them in. Y'all let us know if you like overnight oats. My husband's favorite. I haven't made that for y'all yet, but I'll bring them on a show and we'll, make you, we'll show y'all how we make them. All right, we're gonna beat that in there. This will be interesting. We need some cookies. Come here, gnome. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get down there on the bottom. Yeah. Dig deep. It is way down there. Isn't Dig it? deep. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is take one cup and a quarter cup of semi chocolate chips. We're gonna add that. Oh, you want me to do it? I and thought then you were gonna do it. Just add them, and then we're gonna mix that using a spatula. That way we don't beat up our hand mixer. Now just beat me up. <laughs> I'm glad you find it amusing. I guess I could get everything ready. <laughs> oh, why? Have me do it. And here you go. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I have a sheet pan lined with some parchment paper. We've got a, a big scoop. That's this right. is kind of like the ice cream scoop. Yeah, we ain't doing no wimpy stuff. No, it holds about three tablespoons. So we're going to go into the batter, pull it up to the side of the dish and scrape. Like that? Yep. And then we're going to place it right on our sheet pan. And now what you want to do is leave two inches between the sides and your next cookie. We're going to call these monster cookies. Oatmeal cookies, Thomas style. Yep. These are Thomas oatmeal cookies, huh? Mm-hmm. Old fashioned oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and just flatten these down. You can take the bottom edge of a glass and do this also. I would just kind of spray it though so it doesn't stick and pull your cookie apart. We're going to place these in the oven. I have preheated at 350 degrees. Are y'all watching him? What? <laughs> For 12 to 14 minutes. And then when we pull them out, I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Now you want to make sure that they have a nice kind of firm set to the top of the cookie. Okay, we pulled the cookies out. Now they were in the oven for 14 minutes. They're nice and golden along the edges and nice and set on the top. We're gonna take some semi-sweet chocolate chips, or I believe these are dark chocolate mm -hmm. chips. Yeah. And we're just gonna place them on the top and kind of push them in. Place them where you want them. These are your cookies. All right, we've already got six more in the oven on another tray. You want to let these sit on the tray for 10 minutes before you start pulling them off. That way they'll set up and be nice and kind of crispy along the edges and soft and chewy on the inside. Mm -hmm. We have 17 cookies. We have some that are on the plate already cooled down. We have a batch here cooling down right here. And then we've got another batch in the oven. But yep. using that three tablespoon scoop, made us 17, 17 large 
cookies. Thomas size cookies. <laughs> He's gonna go in and show you this cookie. I'm gonna bring you up here and give you a close up on it. All right, there's the cookie. Look at the back side, nice and crispy, golden brown. Oh, there's your soft and chewy on the inside with those chocolate chips. Look at this, you guys. Wow. All right, he's going to give it a try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. All right, y'all, let us know what you think of Thomas's old-fashioned oatmeal and chocolate chip cookies. Thomas size. Perfect for Christmas. All right, y'all, give us a thumbs up. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I have a special guest in my kitchen today. This is my mom. Hello. <laughs> now, I got my mom in the kitchen today because it's cookie day, and I've been doing cookie days for several days now with my family members, bringing them in and having them make their favorite cookie. Now, I haven't told you about my mom yet. That was a special surprise. So, what is your favorite cookie? Pecan balls. Pecan balls. Yes. All right. Now, you've made these for how long? About 50 years <laughs> or so. A very long time. A long time. She yes. makes them every year, and she makes them in batches. Huge batches, and yes. And then gives them out to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I always get my share. And always in advance. <laughs> yeah, she makes them in advance, <laughs> freezes them, and that's how she gives them out. Yep. We're going to go through and show you this recipe. So we're going to be following her recipe, which you can find on my recipe blog at katherinesplates.com. Or if you follow along with the video today and just write down everything, you'll be able to make your own pecan ball. The first step is we're going to cream together two sticks of butter, which equals one cup. And we're going to put it into this lovely little bowl. Now you want to make sure that it's very soft, very soft and brought to room temperature. That way it'll cream together with the other ingredients. To that, we're going to add a quarter cup of white granulated sugar. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much sugar at all. It's there, I'll let you add that okay. while I get the flour. All right. We're going to be using two cups of all-purpose flour. Right. So I'm just, like I tell you, I'll just dive deep into your flour. Shake it off. Then I just use a knife, pat it down, and scrape it off. There we go. That's one. So how did you come across this recipe? It was in one of the first cookbooks that I got after I was married. And it, it was, a, oddly enough, a Christmas cookbook. And it had this recipe in it, and it had um, one for almond crescents which is the other one that I really like. Yeah, that's another good cookie. Yeah, that was a very good cookie. All right, so what we're going to do now is you're going to cream this together. Right. Using an electric hand mixer yes. until it's all combined. Until it's all combined, yes. All right. Okay, I have to. Yep. There we go. Start off slow because you don't want a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in southeast Texas and we would love a snowstorm. Okay, so let's move it up just a little bit. There All right, we so we're going to ramp up the speed just a little bit right. and combine the rest. Do I need to go in with a spatula and kind of help? Uh, a little bit. Poke down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are chopped pecans. Mm -hmm. And you want to make two cups of finely chopped pecans. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to add enough in here to where we feel like we're going to get two cups. Okay, this is uh, how many ounces? 10 ounces. 10 ounces, so that's not quite two cups. All right. So we're going to go ahead and dump the whole thing in there. Y'all, let us know down below what you cannot do without on Christmas. Uh -huh. What do you have to make that everybody wants? <laughs> so this is another 10 ounce. Uh -huh. So we're going to use what, about half? Half, okay. About half, okay. And that should give us our two cups. All right. If not, then we can always You can always add, add more. more. We're going to pulse these until we get to the desired texture. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look. I think that's what we got. Very fine. Let's measure this out to two cups. 
I think Christmas is always <laughs> little bits of everything all over all the kitchen. All the time, yes it is. Yes. So what we're going to do is bring our batter back over. Mm -hmm. We're going to add it to the batter and then we're going to mix it all up. Right. We're going to form our pecan balls. We've got two sheet pans lined with some parchment paper. Mm -hmm. You want to take a one inch cookie scoop. So what you're going to do is scoop through the batter and then just kind of scrape along the edge of the bowl. And then put it in your impeccably clean hand. <laughs> and then you have to kind of squish it together. To form like, a ball. To form a ball. Form about a walnut sized ball. Yep. And then just put it on your, on your paper. Now, you don't need to leave a lot of room in no, between them, don't. okay? You just want the air from the oven to be able to go through them mm -hmm. so you don't have to spread them out. Put them all mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And give them room to have air go between them. Y'all, look. <laughs> He's empty. We got to fill him again. Oh. All right, we're going to finish rolling these out, and yeah, then we're going to we're gonna finish this up for you. All right, how okay. many did we make? 39. We're going to place these in the oven that's been preheating at... 300. Why 300? Because you need to do them very low and slow so the butter doesn't go all over the place. <laughs> all right. So they're going to go in for 45 Five minutes. minutes. What we're going to do, 10 minutes before the cookies come out of the oven, we need to go ahead and have that sugar mixture put together. You're going to start off with one cup of powdered sugar. Now my mom says it's very important that you sift your powdered sugar. We're just going to put it into this. Which is a sifter, and then she's going to beat on it. <laughs> as well, I, usually. As I add in all the I powdered sugar. Do. There we go. Three. I'm using a quarter cup. And there we go. Four. Gotcha. Okay. And then mm -hmm. we're going to add half a cup of white granulated sugar to the powdered sugar. And then we're just gonna whisk that all together. All right, our pecan balls have come out of the oven. Now we have an extra pan right here just lined with some parchment paper so that once we get them all powdered up, we can place them on the pan. We have our bowl ready to go. Just need two spoons or you can use some tongs. You can place several of the pecan balls into your powdered sugar mixture. And then as they go in, you're just going to turn them around and completely coat them. And then just take them and just kind of dust them off a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And then place them on your sheet pan. Mm -hmm. We're going to get these all done and then we're going to come back to you. That's why it's very important that you do this step mm -hmm. when these come right out of the oven. Mm -hmm. That way the powdered sugar mixture will hold onto the pecan balls. I'm going to put mine into a Christmas tin, make them look nice and pretty. Who wouldn't love to get these for Christmas? 38 cookies made a batch. All right, we're going to cover these with a little bit more of the sugar. There we go. Easy Christmas gift. All right, y'all let us know what you think of my mom's pecan balls. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Bye. We need something to fill our cookie jar. I've got thumbprint cookies. This recipe comes out of my first cookbook, Making Home Cooking Simple, Easy, and Delicious. In a large mixing bowl, we're going to add two sticks or one cup of very soft butter. Now, the recipe calls for unsalted. I tend to use one stick unsalted and one stick salted, just because that's the way I like my cookie. But you can do both sticks unsalted. We're going to add in two-thirds cup white granulated sugar. We're going to take an electric hand mixer and we're going to beat the butter and the sugar together until it's nice and creamy. This should take about a minute or two. You want to get that sugar combined into that butter. 
the color of the butter should turn pale and lighter than it was at the beginning of this step. I love this hand mixer, it is so quiet. This is a KitchenAid, I love this one. If you're interested in any of the tools that I use, I have a storefront from Amazon that's linked down below in the description box. We're gonna beat in one egg yolk, so I'm just gonna take my egg and I'm gonna crack it onto a small bowl. I'm gonna let all the whites fall out so we have that egg yolk there. Just go back and forth after you crack your egg. There we go. We're gonna add that to our mixture. We're gonna add one teaspoon of a vanilla extract. A little extra never hurt. We're gonna beat that in until it's well combined. We're gonna sift in two and a quarter cups. This is all purpose flour. I'm just gonna use my sifter and add my flour to it. That's one cup. Two cups. Half of that. I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of salt and sift that all in there. There we go. We're just gonna mix that. We're gonna start on the low setting. I'm gonna bring it up and get all the dough off. I'm just gonna go in with a wooden spoon and just get the rest combined. All we're gonna do now is start forming the cookies. You're gonna need a large sheet pan I've lined it with some parchment paper, or you can use a silicone mat, or just lightly spray your pan. I'm going to be using a one inch cookie scoop. So you're going to go in, kind of drag it through, and then flatten it out at the top. Place it into the palm of your hand. We're going to roll it and form balls, like that, and then place it on your cookie sheet. Now as we do these, we want to leave room in between so that way we can flatten the cookies and they can bake in the oven. What we're going to do now is create that thumbprint in the cookies. Now you can use your thumbs for this or you can use a small spoon. What you want to do is make sure that you have a gully in the cookie, that way the jellies can fit in there. And press in and then just turn it. You can use your thumb, just go in and form the cookie, just like that. Now as we're doing this, let me let you know that I do have two other cookbooks. So I have three volumes of cookbooks throughout the years that I've been cooking for y'all. You can find the links to them down below in the description box or you can go to my blog at katherinesplates.com and there's a tab for cookbooks. Now this recipe can also be found on my blog also. You're gonna take your favorite jellies or jams and then we're gonna take a spoon of it and place it right into the center of each cookie. I'm doing all three. Well, they're gonna be in separate cookies, but that way it just looks pretty. Nice jewel tones. Just need about a teaspoon worth to fill the cookie. I should tell you the flavors. I've got strawberry here, apricot, and then I have grape back here also. I'm ready to place these in the oven that's been preheated at 375 degrees. They're gonna bake for eight to 10 minutes. We want them to be nice and golden brown on the bottom. All right, once your cookies cool on the pan, you can remove them and place them in an airtight container or your cookie jar or lay them out for everyone to eat. Look at how delicious those look. Ready for the holidays. Let's pick one up. It's nice and firm. Nice and golden brown on the back side. And that jelly has set. It's 
very important to let these cool down for that. Got my cookie jar. We need to fill the gnome up. Oh yeah, the first cookies of the season. Mm. Which one do I want? I'm gonna go for the apricot. Oh yeah. I wonder how long these will last. Not very long. I'm gonna have to start making another batch of cookies. <laughs> this batch makes about 24 to 30 cookies. Depends on if you're using the one inch cookie scoop. All right, let's go in and give these a try. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. They're very light. It's very buttery and it's very delicious. And then that flavor comes from the jelly or jam that you put inside the cookie. That's really delicious. My recipe for thumbprint cookies can be found in my first cookbook, making home cooking simple, easy, and delicious. You can also find this recipe in my recipe blog at katherinesplates.com. Just type in thumbprint cookies. All right. Y'all give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I'll see y'all on the next episode.